and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. We've had several people ask us about what kinds of tools we carry with us in our RV. And so I'm going to mention what we carry and I'm going to ask you to do us a favor and that is anything that we don't mention, please leave us a comment because we want to all be as prepared as possible. I have some good friends that have told me Redneck Toolkit consists of duct tape and WD-40. And while that's not all we carry, these things certainly can come in handy. And so it's nice to have them along. And um, a couple of just kind of general safety things I want to mention up front, and that is having some sort of a safety vest or reflective, uh, these are armbands, something like that. So if you should have any kind of trouble while you're out on the road, um, are you gonna look silly? You betcha, but is there a chance somebody will see you that might not otherwise? Yes. And so it's a good idea to have something that has some reflective material and is gonna make you more visible. Um, just as a, a matter of caution. I know some people that even carry long little cones to have with them. Not a bad idea. And uh, another thing that I'm just going to mention as part of a safety area, and that is if you have any hydraulics, um, and I assume this works just on electric slides or something like that as well, but this is an important tool to know if you want to know how to get your slide in and how to get your landing gear up should your hydraulics fail or should there not be a power source if you had some sort of catastrophic uh, problem and so knowing where this tool is that will do that for you and where to use it uh, how to use it and that's going to be really specific for each rv but it's a good idea to know where those things are before you go so you can look that up and kind of have peace of mind knowing, okay, if I have to, I at least have some idea what I'm looking at and looking for. A lot of this is just going to be kind of general. Um, I want to also mention, have some sort of, I would say, a fairly decent quality, not high quality, but something, not just a little plastic something. Uh, if you travel much, odds are you're going to set up or tear down when it's raining at some point. That's going to, you know, you're going to have to do it. So the drier you can be while you're doing that, um, probably the happier you're going to be, and so are the people that are traveling with you. Okay, some other things that are not necessary, but just kind of things that, that we've accumulated. One is um, a, well, it's back here, it's a battery charger. And um, this has really come in handy. We were in Red River, New Mexico when we found out that I had blown the inverter. And uh, so we ended up, that's not the cheapest place to buy a battery charger, but we ended up getting it. And as it turns out, it's kind of come in handy. We've, we've used it several times. And so we just keep it in the RV. We know where it is. And if we need it, uh, we have it for either the RV batteries or the vehicle batteries. So while not necessary, um, you know, we have it. And I'll go on and mention, I do have jumper cables in the truck uh, so that uh, those are also there. Something else, and once again, I just stored this in the RV, is uh, an air compressor. I decided early on it was gonna be easier to check the pressure of the tires on the RV before we leave for a trip. You know, a lot of times we'll get up and leave early before discount tires, places like that are open. And so we went on and got a little air compressor. Now, and if you're like me and, and not necessarily a mechanic, um, I want to mention before you purchase an air compressor, check the PSI on your RV tires. It's going to be higher probably than it is on uh, just a vehicle tire. And make sure that the air compressor that you get, if you choose to do this, will is higher than the psi that's required for your tires and then that's also going to mean you're probably going to need um, a higher uh, tire gauge as well so that you can check that um, the rest of this stuff there's a lot of stuff that's kind of general some of it's a little bit more specific i always make sure i have several rolls of plumber's tape it's not going to hurt to have it along it doesn't take up much space and um, if you have to do any kind of plumbing repairs or anything 
uh, that can come in really handy. Um, a, I will try and do this as, um, I just pick up whatever I see when I get it. We have an adapter. We're a 30 amp, so we have a 30 amp to 50 amp adapter. And if you are 50 amp, you want to make sure you have a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter. Um, we actually have ended up having to use this. We had gotten into a, a site and uh, gotten everything really done, unhitched and, and set up ready to go. And uh, the 30 amp didn't work. So we plugged this in and the 50 amp side did. And so this came in really handy. So I'm going to mention along with this, we also carry an extra freshwater hose, an extra sewer hose. And we have an extension for our 30 amp plug. We've used that extension several times and it's really nice to have it. Um, and so we also were in a situation where we blew the water hose, fresh water hose. The fact that we had an extra, a spare, uh, we were able to not make a trip and where we were staying it would have been a trip to go in, buy a freshwater hose and, and replace it. We were just able to use our spare and then replace the spare. So those are really handy things to have along. Um, and I do recommend that as well. Um, another thing, this doesn't take up that much room. I carry um, a caulking gun and some caulk. You know, if you get somewhere and happen to notice that there is a little place where a seam is not has, has come loose or something. I mean, you're constantly driving and, and this thing's bouncing around. It's better to have this than not. Um, I also have some patch for the roof. And uh, if you're going to be doing roof repairs, what you really need for a roof is self-leveling. Um, if I were in a pinch, I wouldn't hesitate to use this, but that's what's really you need. But uh, read the directions I'll just say that if you get some roof patch it's a nice thing to have along folks if you're going to a lot of different campsites you're backing in there may be low-hanging trees um, if you get a little hole in your roof cleaning that up putting on a patch you don't have to worry about any kind of water damage or leaks or anything like that so it's kind of a, a good idea to have that along basic toolkits uh, I keep in my truck and these you know have all kinds of accessories etc and these are very you know you want to have those with you um, I also had just some um, wrenches and um, just various tools that I that I leave in in my truck so that uh, I have those I will mention I do have some specific tools that are for specific repairs that I'm not going to include here like the uh, heating element on the hot water heater went on and ordered that just because it was cheaper to do that and repair it myself than it was to have it done and that way I have the tool if it goes out again. It doesn't hurt to have a level along even though you may have them on your RV. Um, having a, a backup level is a is a good idea. Various types of bungee cords and uh, zip ties once again, doesn't take up much room, but they're handy to have. Um, when I mentioned water hose, I didn't mention that we also have just some washers for the water hoses because you're constantly connecting and disconnecting those. So having some extra ones along, um, it's it's easier than not. Um, having some a fuse tester and some extra fuses for um, for your RV. Also, uh, you know, it's it's easier to carry these along with you have them with you in that way you're not having to constantly make those trips um, and then this has some specifics um, I don't remember what we were repairing but there was something that had a specific head that we didn't have and so I did my best to take a picture of it went to Lowe's or Home Depot somewhere like that and then was able to get the the piece that I needed to make the specific repair so those kinds of things I just keep in here so that I know whenever I go to look for an odd uh, type of screwdriver head or something, uh, it certainly may be in here with the with the mismatches and misfits. Um, one last thing I forgot to mention, and that is, in case everything else goes out, having these, I do have the little headlights that I. Um, 
that I use to take the dogs out sometimes. But having a crank up flashlight, backup flashlight, um, and even better, at home I have one that has a radio on it. That can really be handy if, uh, you know, if you get out somewhere and everything dies, you at least have a flashlight and, like I said, a radio along to, to try and stay connected with civilization. And once again, if there's something that you carry along as uh, a tool or something that you've found that you've needed uh, on the road, please leave a comment below so that we can all be as prepared as possible. Thanks for watching. Two Tired Teachers.